Hey, what's going on gang? Welcome to your 34th Vue.js tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how we can create some custom directives. Okay then, so throughout the course of this playlist we've already used directives all over the show. Um, and directives are a way for us to tell Vue.js to do something, to exhibit a certain behaviour for us. So things that we've used so far are vIv, that's a directive, uh, vOn, v4, v model, all these are directives telling Vue.js to do something for us. And they've all got one thing in common. They start with this v hyphen. Okay, so that's typically how you can tell a directive. They start with v hyphen. And we add them to HTML elements as attributes like this. Okay, so what I'm going to show you to do. So what if we want to do something in Vue.js? We want to use a directive but that directive doesn't exist. The behavior we want isn't already included in Vue.js. Well, we can create a custom directive, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do in this tutorial. So I'm gonna to go to our show blogs component right here. And say, for example, this blog title we output, we're outputting 10 of them right on the page. Say I want each one to be some kind of random color, right? So we could make up our own directive and we could control that functionality. So if I want to add a directive, I could just say v hyphen, then whatever the directive name is going to be called. Now we'll make one called rainbow, which is going to do this. So it's just going to choose a random color and assign it to each H2. All right. So each H2 on the page is going to be a different color. So we've got this directive right here. We don't need to set it equal to anything. I mean, we can do and we'll do that later on, but we don't have to do that. We could just have a bog standard simple directive v rainbow which when we apply that to an element is going to give it a random color okay so let's save this and let's create this directive so we're going to create this globally this directive and i'm going to show you how to do things locally later on in later tutorials but for now let's just create a directive which is going to be global meaning any component can use it so the way we're going to do this first of all is go to main.js and then let's do a little comment saying custom directives okay then the way we create a directive is by saying view.directive. So this is much like when we created a component, we said view.component, this time it's view.directive, okay? And this takes a couple of arguments. First of all, the name of our directive. Now remember, we call this v-rainbow, but this isn't the whole directive name, this bit is the directive name, okay? This is just something we put before the directive name. So in here, we wanna just call it rainbow, okay? Then the second parameter right here is going to be an object. And inside this object is where we can control the functionality of this directive. Now, you know, like in previous tutorials, I said that components have lifecycle hooks like created, uh, destroyed, updated, that kind of thing. Well, so do directives. And we're going to use a lifecycle hook called bind. And basically what this does is fire when the directive is bound to the element. So as soon as it kind of hooks up, if you like, okay? So as soon as it's made that kind of connection, we're going to fire this bind function and inside this function, we're going to control what it does. But this bind function right here takes three parameters, L, binding and virtual node, which is just V node. Now this thing right here refers to the virtual node on the DOM. You're not going to need this much. Okay, let's just spell binding correctly. Okay, so we don't really need to touch that. This thing right here, binding, refers to information about the connection if we pass it in a value, for example, like this in here, okay? Things like that, and we're gonna take a look at that shortly. And then this L right here refers to the element itself. So this whole thing that it's on, okay? So what we can do, for example, for this rainbow component is take this element and then give it some kind of random background color, okay? So the way we're going to do that is by getting the L and then what we can do is just get the style property of that element. Okay. So this is the CSS style and then we can decide which property we want to style. We could say dot color. So that is going to be equal to some random color, right? So what color is it going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be a random hash color. So first of all, we need a hash. Then we're going to tack on six random digits. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, we're gonna use the math object, okay? Then we're gonna say, get us a random number. Then we're gonna convert that to a string, to string. And then finally, what we're gonna do is slice that. So we'll say slice 
two to eight. And that is gonna get us a random six digit number, okay? So now we could save this. And if we view this in a browser, then we can see that each one of these has a random color, okay? And if I refresh, then we're gonna get different colors. So they're not hard coded or anything like that. They're just completely random, which is why I called it V Rainbow. So there we go, congratulations. You've made your very own directive, okay? Now, if this bit here is confusing you, just do a uh, quick Google search of the math object and random and things like that. Uh, this isn't a math JavaScript tutorial, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but basically all this is doing is returning to us a six digit random number, which is gonna be attached to this pound symbol to make a hex code. But this isn't the point of the tutorial. The point is we can add a directive and we could even do something just like, for example, if I copy that out and say red, if we wanted everything to be red, we could do that, save it and everything's red, okay? I just wanted to make it a random hex code because it's a little bit more fun, okay? So that is how we make a custom directive. Now, I said we could do other things. We could do something like this. We could say equals and then pass through some kind of value, okay? So to demonstrate this, I wanna create a different custom directive. So this time the directive is gonna control the kind of like the theme of the web page, And the theme is gonna be whether it's gonna be a wide theme or a narrow theme, okay? So something pretty simple. So let's attach this directive to this div right here that surrounds all of the blocks. So we'll call this directive theme. So it's V hyphen theme, right? And then we're gonna set that equal to something in a minute. So let's save it for now. And then inside this main.js, let's create this directive. So we'll say again, view dot directive. This is going to register it globally because it's in this main.js file. So directive, then it's called theme. Then the second parameter is an object. And inside this object, again, we're going to do the bind hook, which takes through the L, the binding and the virtual node. Okay. So now we're going to give this div right here, some kind of theme based on whatever we pass through here. Now, whatever we pass through here is going to be called a value. All right. So for example, if we want a wide theme, we can pass through the value of wide and then we can access this value right here within the directive. We can check to see what value was passed through. So inside here, we could say something like if, and then we can say binding. This is going to give us information about the directive and we can get the value property on the binding, okay? So we can say if the binding.value is equal to wide, which it is at the minute, okay, it's equal to wide, that's the value, then we can do something. So what we want to do, if it's wide, is give it a wide theme. So we'll say L, which is the element we've attached it to, this thing right here, this div. So we can say L dot style dot max width, and by the way, when we use two words, it's camel case like that, okay? We don't say max hyphen width or anything like that. It's just max width. And we're gonna set that equal to 1,200 pixels, okay? So that's if it's wide. So if we save this now, view it in a browser, then refresh, nothing is showing up. So I'm just gonna open up the console and see what's gone wrong. And we have a syntax error. So that's because I've stupidly said colon here instead of equals so save that and we should get this if we refresh but we get another error and this is something i actually wanted to show you so right now i've passed through this right here wide so why is this not working well it says right here that wide is not defined on the instance but is referred during render and it's referred to as a property or method now it's not a property or method it's just a value we're passing through here but because it's a string, we need to pass it through in single quotations, okay? This is a string because right now we can pass anything through here. We could pass an object, we could pass an array. We just wanna pass through a string, okay? So we're passing through a string which is wide. So let's save that now and see if this works. Refresh. And now we don't get any errors and we get the wide theme, cool. So what if we want this to be a narrow theme? Well, we can do the same kind of thing. We can check to see if the binding value is narrow. So underneath this, I'm gonna come down and say else if, and inside here we'll say binding.value is equal to narrow. 
okay? And then inside here, if it is, we'll say l.style.max width is equal to, and it's gonna be 800 pixels, or rather something narrower, 560 pixels, okay? So if we save this now, and go to our show blogs and change this to narrow, save it, view this in a browser, refresh, now we get a narrow theme, okay? Pretty cool. So that's how we use values in these custom directives. I wanna show you one more thing and that is arguments. So you know like in other directives, for example, if we go to V on click, this right here, colon, and then the click, this is an argument, okay? So this is the value right here when it's equal to something and this thing after the argument, uh, sorry, after the colon is an argument. And we can pass in custom arguments into our custom directives. So say for example, we wanna pass in an argument to this, we could do a colon and then the argument name. So let's say for example, I wanna pass in an argument called column, okay? So we want it to look this thing like some kind of column on a page. So we'll give it all a background color, like a big strip going down. Then what we can do is use this argument right here in the directive, okay? So what we'll do is also check, we'll say if, and inside the if statement, we can check the argument. So we can say if binding dot arg is equal to whatever we want it to be equal to. So column, for example, then we can do something much like we did in here. So we could say something like L dot style dot background is equal to, I don't know, uh, DDD, which is like a gray color and then also l.style.padding is equal to 20 pixels, right? So now if it has this argument attached to it, then we're gonna do this as well. So if we view this in a browser, we can see this kind of column effect now, okay? We've got this big column going down. So that's how we use arguments. That's also how we use values, and that's how we create our own custom directives.